Hey friends, today we are hanging out at Disney's Animal Kingdom. It is a beautiful April day, so I wanted to come out and ride some rides, eat some food, and have a wild Animal Kingdom kind of day. Anywho, let's go do this. Look at that big beautiful blue sky. Today's April 13th and it's 81 degrees out and it's nice and windy so I love it. This is like the perfect weather to come to Animal Kingdom. I always say that Animal Kingdom is one of the hottest parks and I don't even know why. Maybe it's the lack of shade. It's definitely one of the biggest parks but I don't know why I always feel like it's the hottest and today like I said it's the perfect weather. It's a perfect day. One of the places I want to explore today is over in Pandora in the Valley of Mora. Actually, you can see the floating mountains from here as soon as you walk in the park. I don't know. I just feel like I haven't been able to go over there and ride rides in a while. You know what I mean? Usually because they're super long, they're probably the most popular attractions in the park. So today we'll take a look at them. Whenever I do come to Animal Kingdom, I usually come around 1 30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon because once 2 o'clock comes, everybody can park hop. And a lot of people don't like staying at Disney's Animal Kingdom because, number one, they don't have a nighttime show and it closes kind of earlier than the other parks. So I feel like sometimes at 2 o'clock, people park hop and that makes the wait times go down. So we'll test that theory out today a little bit as well. Now I do have a dining reservation at Tusker House and that is a character dining so we're going to be able to eat with some of our favorite characters and I also believe it's the cheapest character dining at Disney World right now so that's going to be great to show you guys as well. I'll go over the prices of Tusker House and give you guys a little bit more information. I think I ate here when it first reopened. I think it was over a year ago and it was really good but things might have changed so it's always fun to actually come back and check them out. Now I want to go see what the wait times are looking like. Like I said, hopefully they're going to drop down at 2 o'clock. Looks like Cali River Rapids is a 60 minute wait. Uh, Dinosaurs 45 minutes. Navi River is 90 minutes. Flight of Passage is 140 minutes. Like I said, it looks pretty busy today. It's tough to be a bug, it's 15 minutes, but we wanna see what Kilimanjaro Safaris is like. And I'm not seeing it here. Any second now, oh, 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 Africa. Temporarily closed. Oh no, Kilimanjaro Safaris is temporarily closed. So all the attractions are gonna be busy today. Oh my lord, if Expedition Everest is closed, which that's been closed for a while, and Kilimanjaro's is closed, that means all the attractions are super long, like they are. Like Navi River, 90 minutes, 140 for Flight of Passage. There's not too many things to do in the park, especially with two of those big, gigantic attractions being down at the moment. Now, Kilimanjaro's is only down because of probably just routine something happening, but uh, hopefully they come back up later in the evening. Much later on, I plan on coming back and meeting up with a friend and hitting up Nomad Lounge. We've been talking about how cozy it is to actually just come to Animal Kingdom, chill out at the Nomad Lounge. It's really fun in there. It's probably my favorite place in Animal Kingdom to get a drink. We're going to head straight back to Pandora though because if we plan on riding any of the rides, we might be looking at a long wait. So uh, might as well get it out of the way now. I did check to see if there were any lightning lanes available for the Pandora rides and Avatar Flight of Passage is completely sold out and the next time for I think the Navi River was like 7.30 at night. So at this point it's better just to hop in line and just wait it out. Another thing I've been really wanting to see is uh, Pandora all lit up at night but it's almost impossible because the park closes at eight and it's still daylight here in Florida at eight o'clock. So you rarely get to see all the bioluminescence all lit up. And that's something I miss, but back in the day, Animal Kingdom used to close at five o'clock. So I remember when it first started opening up at night, it was a big, big deal and I missed that. The hype was real. When you come here though at night and everything's all lit up, it's like you're just in a different world. Like it really does feel all the bioluminescence and the concrete here is all lit up green and it just glows. Everything's just so beautiful. We can try tonight, but like I said, I don't think it's going to be dark enough. Usually at 8 o'clock, it's still daylight. Well, it's not daylight. It's just getting sunset and that's what time the park closes. So maybe we'll see. Now we're going to head over to the Navi River journey. It says a 90 minute wait, so hopefully it's not that long. And it's funny because the other day I just went to a really cool Airbnb and they had like a Navi River like movie theater. So that's what kind of inspired me to come out to Animal Kingdom today. I was there and I was like, wait, I haven't been to Animal Kingdom in a while. 
I like hanging out in the queue for Navi River because you get to hear all this like amazing background sounds. I can fall asleep to it actually. It's really, really cool. And uh, yeah, I guess the wait is on. The wait is on. I love all the detail in here. Like it looks so amazing, doesn't it? And this also looks really cool at night as well. They also have a really good fan system in here, so it does keep you cool even though you're outside. Okay, that was just about 90 minutes. <laughs> oh my lord, but I can smell the water. I can smell the water. I love the smell of this ride. It is so amazing. I love the smell of any boat water ride. I have no idea why, and I think they all smell different. You gotta love that bro, man. And we're getting row number one. Animatronic gets me every time and the music like you really do get the feels in there It's nice and breezy the AC is strong Wonderful animatronics a good music score. I really do love Navi River I just wish it was a little bit longer. You know what I mean? Like I don't mind waiting the long waits as long as like the ride is actually a lengthy ride That one I feel like it's not so bad like I think it ends in like a minute 30 maybe two minutes I'll have to look up the exact like ride time for that the official ride time is four and a half minutes. Four and a half minutes for that ride. Now let's head to Flight of Passage, see if the wait time went down while we were in line there, because I think when we went in it was 140 minutes. I think it was like 140 minute wait. So maybe the two o'clock, uh, going past two o'clock actually does prove my point that the wait times go down because people park hop. So we'll see. Oh yeah, look at that, 95 minutes now. 95 minutes for Flight of Passage right now. If I would have known it went down to 95 minutes, I probably would have waited and just waited in line here. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just did that long haul for Navi River, but I don't have time for that now. So before two o'clock, 140 minute wait. After two o'clock, 95 minute wait. That is a big difference. That's almost an hour difference. We have to make our way over to Tusker House because it's almost time for our reservation and that's over in Africa So we're just gonna skip out of uh, Pandora and uh, come in the back way This might actually be my last socially distant character dining meal because as you may know April 18th the uh, ropes come down and we're gonna be able to actually have regular character meet and greets again So this will be the last one I think all right, we made it to Tusker House. A lot of people don't even know that Tusker House is back here because it doesn't have like a big sign. But uh, if you guys get drinks out here behind the back, this is where Tusker House, there's like a little sign in the back way that you can see. Oh yeah, it's right there. And I really do like it here. Here is a look at the prices for Tusker House. And I thought that it was $42, but it looks like it went up to 55. So it's guest three to nine, $36. And then guest ages 10 and over is $55. So I think it did go up a little bit. Maybe I'm hallucinating though, because I could have swore it was like $42. Maybe that was, that was when it first reopened and all of the uh, prices were down and maybe they didn't have characters yet. I don't know. It's really tough, I'll have to look back. The theming inside this restaurant is so amazing. We already have our table, so I'm gonna take you guys back. But uh, this used to be a buffet, now it's family style. And it's really, really good. It's definitely a special, unique dining experience. And I think we're all the way back here. Looks like we got Daisy there. And we'll see Daisy, Donald, Mickey, Goofy, Pluto, everybody. Well, look at Safari, Kilimanjaro Safari. 
and I think our table's back here. Now we're at our table, and like I said, the price is $55, and that's still the cheapest, actually, character dining, because uh, I think some of them are $65, but I thought it was $42. Like, I might be wrong, but that includes everything. It's all you care to enjoy. It used to be a buffet. Now it's a family style, so they're just going to bring everything out to us. Uh, we have a salad, bread service, and then we get the main skillet. And that also includes soft drink, like your beverages is too. First things first, the bread service. And this comes with hummus and then a mango chutney, which this mango chutney was phenomenal. And I like the bread, it's a little papadon, and then it actually has an African-inspired salad with the citrus vinaigrette dressing. That's good as well. And uh, yeah, we'll dive into some bread while we're here and wait. I love this bread though. It's like honestly eating a chip. Ooh. Oh, here comes Donald. Oh, wow. <laughs> I love it, Donald is so wild. We're gonna be seeing all the characters. They're gonna come right up to the table, and like I said, soon, uh, April 18th, we're actually gonna be able to get up, and we're gonna be able to like, have a very close selfie or take photos with them again, and uh, it's gonna be nice to even hug them. Now you have to do it a little bit socially distant, but it's not too bad. As Donald was strutting down the hallway there, our food came out, and we've got Moroccan spiced beef with some chimichurri on there, We've got split roasted herb chicken. We've got a marinated pork. We've got rice. We've got potato, roasted potatoes, corn, green beans, everything under here. Look at that, oh, the carrots. Then we also got some mac and cheese that they bring out. And oh, oh yeah, this is the shrimp. So this is really cool because this is a Cape, uh, uh, Cape Malay green curry shrimp. Look at this. Can you see the green shrimp in there? Looks like little tiny baby shrimp doll. Little tiny baby ones. I have done a full like dining video here when it first opened, and it does look like everything's the same, so we're not gonna go too far into detail with it, but we're gonna start with the Moroccan beef here. I remember last time the Moroccan beef was my favorite. Then the pork, then the chicken. The rice is really good here too. And in case you don't like some of the more adventurous food items, you can get chicken nuggets and french fries. They do bring those out to the table. I ordered some french fries because I love them. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna dive in and wait for more characters. Maybe Goofy, Mickey soon? On top of the great food, you also get a really nice dessert sampler. And I can't wait to show you guys that as well. And they brought out chicken nuggets with my french fries. So you can't just get french fries on their own. They'll bring out everything. You see they brought out a little bit of the chicken nuggies and the french fries all together. Oh, and I think we got another character coming out. Honestly, I forgot about these roasted potatoes though. These are really good, especially when you get that chimichurri sauce in there. Gotta get that all in one bite. That is so awesome. Oh, here comes Mickey himself. The man himself just got back from a safari. I love it. Oh, you bow? Oh, that's awesome. Nice. Another really cool thing you can do is make a little steak sandwich. Take these little tiny rolls right here, cut them right down the center. There we go. Get it like a nice little open up. Bada bing. Then you take your steak. And this steak is so good. Look at this. Perfect. And here is the goof. Look at that. You're my favorite, just to let you know, goof. Yep. Hands down. Oh, yeah, much love. Well, thank you. Ooh, and I hope you had a great safari. <laughs> nice. Thanks, man. It's like a little steak slider. A little steak slider. Oh, but here comes Mickey coming back. Well, that was a lot of fun. Now I think it's time the desserts come out. So we're gonna have a little desserts, and uh, I haven't seen Minnie yet. I think Minnie should be here too. So 
Mickey Mouse vanilla cupcakes with buttercream frosting, cool. Creative Life chocolate and caramel brownies, and a honeybee sponge cake with white chocolate. Nice. There you go. I love and it. And this is our plant-based oh. dessert. It's a plant-based chocolate mousse with dried passion fruit and raspberry. Wow, that looks really good. Well, thank you. Yeah, looks so good. I didn't get this last time, but this is the plant-based dessert. But I remember this honey sponge cake is so amazing. Also, the Tree of Life brownie. That is so cool. I can't wait to dive into it, though. Look at Donald just sitting there. Yep, I I'm watching. I'm watching. <laughs> Seriously, the best. Wow. And let's get to these desserts here. I mean, I'm ready. I'm ready to dive in. Let's start off with the honeybee cake. Look at this, nice little sponge cake. Ooh, don't wanna lose that bee. This was my favorite last time too. Now let's dive into the plant-based dessert. Gonna get a little bit of the strawberry, a little bit of this right here. Put it right on there. Perfect. It's like eating a chocolate covered strawberry. Well, it is a chocolate covered strawberry. But look at that. Oh yeah, that is really good. I can't stop looking at Donald. <laughs> I think I'm throwing in the towel. Like I said, I didn't go into like a full review because I really did, I did a whole review when it first opened and nothing really changed, except for the characters can get a little bit closer. So if you wanted to check that out, I'll put a link in the description for a full review. But here I just kind of hung out a little bit Got to see some characters, eat some food, and have fun. And now uh, I think it's time to head back out to Animal Kingdom. Now that we just got done having a great meal at Tusker House, I think we might as well head on over to Kilimanjaro, see if it opened back up again, and if not, make our way over to Asia. If you guys are wondering whether or not Tusker House is worth $55. I can tell you most of the character dinings are $55, like I said. Uh, some of them going all the way up to $65. And if I was gonna rank them, I would probably put this in like my number four spot. It's still very good, but I mean, I kind of like storybook dining. That's one of my favorite character dinings. Chef Mickey's really up their game. Uh, Garden Grill has been phenomenal. I think Garden Grill is just always a go-to for me. Then I would say Tusker House, and then maybe Hollywood and Vine. Hollywood and Vine's okay, it's good. I I like the characters better there, but the food here is way better than Hollywood Vine. Oh my lord, it does look like Kilimanjaro's actually opened up. And because it's been closed for most of the day, when it opens up, it's kind of like the go-to attraction. And that's why it is a 125 minute wait. 125 minute wait, so whenever a ride goes down, all those lightning lanes that people have, they don't just disappear, they just get pushed back and you're allowed to come at any time. So then therefore, you have a lightning lane that is just taking up all of the basically ride vehicles and it's gonna make the standby go much longer. So for a 125 minute wait, I think we're gonna have to pass on Kilimanjaro's. Maybe later it's gonna go down once everyone gets to go ride it after they haven't been able to ride it all day. You never know, it might quiet down a little bit later on. So we'll, we'll, we'll come back and check. We're gonna keep moving along and making our way over to Expedition Everest. Even though we can't ride it, we can still look at it. We can just stare at it. <laughs> Other than Kite Tales, until Expedition Everest opens up, there's really nothing over here. And it used to be such a crowded area, now it's just empty. Like, it's, it's crazy. Look at it over here. I remember coming over here and always being super busy, but now it's just, like I said, wide open spaces. Now I think we're gonna make our way over to Dino Land USA. I really wanna ride Dinosaur, and it probably isn't that long of a wait. You know, I checked the wait times uh, just a couple minutes ago and everything else seems pretty busy, but Dinosaur was only like a 15 minute wait. Also, I hear that there's a special little coffee beverage over here, a little coffee ice cream. So maybe we'll get that once we get done with Dinosaur. If not, maybe into Restaurantosaurus or the uh, Restaurantosaurus Lounge. This actually is one of my favorite lounges too, but I much like Nomad Lounge a little bit better. But we're gonna head right on in. It said that it's only a 15 minute wait, so I'm pretty sure it is. Now it does get a little bit dark out there, so I'm not gonna be able to show you much, but we'll show you what we can. 
Oh, securely locked in. Okay, here we go. Oh. Time travel commencing in T minus 10 seconds and counting. This is Seeker. Listen up. We've got to get in, grab the aquatic dog, and get out before that asteroid hits. Oh, Let's boy. Go. ride is one of my all-time favorite rides I love it <laughs> it's so much gives you so much adrenaline and anxiety I just can't get over it last time I was here there was some primeval world left but look at that nothing like it is just completely gone and so much possibility so much room over there you know if you're gonna tear it down you got to put something in its place so hopefully soon we'll find out what it's gonna be and now I think I need to get myself some coffee. We've been here for a very long time. I know sometimes in the videos it doesn't like seem like that because everything's edited and put together, but like I've been here for like six and a half hours now. Like <laughs> it's time to get some coffee. I need a pick me up. I need a pick me upper. Right here at Dino Bite, they actually have a cold brew coffee ice cream float. Look at this. So it's Joffrey's coffee with either French roast or uh, I think they have the shake in Jamaican and then haagen dazs vanilla ice cream. So it's like a root beer float but with coffee instead and I am interested. <laughs> oh wow, that's mine? That's the French roast? That looking good. Thank you. I like this a lot. Oh wow, they give you a big straw too. It's crazy because I'm sure it starts to taste even better the more it sits. The more the ice cream melts, look at that. Look at what's happening in this cup right here. And like I said, they give you this gigantic straw too. I mean, this is, I'm pretty excited. I needed the coffee too. French roast is pretty strong coffee, but here we go. Oh yeah, very coffee-ish. You really gotta mix in that ice cream to get <laughs> something other than just black coffee. <laughs> yeah, once you actually mix it around a little bit, when you just first take your first sip, it's just going to be like coffee. Like you're just going to taste black coffee, but as the ice cream melts in, it gets really, really good. Especially if you suck up a little bit of coffee and then the ice cream afterwards, because then you get like that taste of strong coffee, but then delicious vanilla ice cream. And it's, it's kind of pleasant. <laughs> And it was $6 actually too, so kind of like the price of a coffee and a side of ice cream. <laughs> like that, literally that's what it is. And now look, it looks like a completely different beverage. Now I'm going to make my way back over to Africa. We're going to check on Kilimanjaro Safaris. And I think it is a little bit better than before since it closed down. And uh, if it's good, wait time, maybe we'll ride. Before we make it over to Kilimanjaro Safaris, I ran into my friend Kristen and she ended up getting the spice potato hand pies here and they look amazing. I would definitely get one, but I already ate that big meal. But look at that, there they are. They look really good though. So you're gonna have to tell me how they are. Try one. Oh, maybe I will try a little bit. I will I might try a little bit. Kristen's making her TikToks. <laughs> <laughs> Got a show inside. I know, the, the cross section there. Yep. We're gonna see and give it a try. And I think it's just potatoes and vegetables. Don't know what vegetables are in there, but the crust looks good. I like it. It's not, it's not overly flavorful though. It's kind of just a, uh, kind of plain, bland. It looks like it did go down a little bit. 60 minutes, still a while, but I mean, might as well. It looks like the lightning lane isn't backed up. 
So we'll time it. We'll see how fast it goes. This might be the longest I've ever waited for Kilimanjaro's. Usually when you walk out of the little like uh, room there, you go straight down there. But we're actually, we're queuing up down here. Kristen, what's our time now? And as we stay here in 27 minutes. 27 minutes. Well, that's not too bad. And we're here. It said 60, but less than 30. I'll take that. I'm glad we waited. Yeah. Oh, we're Jumbo, off! Everybody, and welcome Jumbo! To the Wildlife Reserve. My name is Dylan. I'm here today. <laughs> Who's ready to go on a safari? <laughs> you! Yeah. I'm laughing so hard. Stay seated at all times. The black rhino. Oh, there's a black rhino. Animal. However, it is one of the smallest species of rhino. It has a prehensile lip that allows it to grab twigs and branches off the forest floor and trees. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's a very lucky on the left. Oh, so, a hippo! see some more hippos now look at that oh it just went underwater pounds there's a that wildebeest chase happening raw bone marrow wow look over here those are wildebeest right in front of us now wildebeest will actually have really poor vision whenever they start to run their eyesight starts to go blurry so they have to actually slow down in order to regather themselves and figure out where their herd is if you have a question just shout it out as long as i'm able to hear it i will do my best to answer it are there any bontabak are there any bontabak we actually might get to see a bontabak Ooh. sometimes we can sometimes the we can't <laughs> bontabak are a really cool animal i'm glad you brought them up thank you <laughs> only bontabak on the reserve there's only one bontabak hopefully we get to see him because i like to tell people about his story um, Bontabak. Uh, there was a point in time where there were less than 20 Bontabak in the entire world. They were on the brink of extinction. What? Until one farmer actually set up a reservation, much like this one, in order to protect those Bontabak. And slowly worked on repopulating the world with them. Mm. Now there are several thousand Bontabak in reservations all across Africa. That's insane. Of one person. It's a really cool story about how one person was able to save an entire species from a certain extinction. That's the coolest story ever, actually. Just goes to show what we can do. I'm sure learning so many things. Skills. Like I'm the right. fact that there's only Straight one Bontabak on this whole entire safari moment, and that there was only 25 in the there. world at one time. That's, that's, like some, that's impressive information. Well, I've never seen the lion come down this far. There's a lion right there. Look the at that. The lions are going to rest or sleep for about 18 oh to 20 hours. Yeah, right? There's a lioness standing up as well. Oh, wow. Oh. Simba. That's Simba. They are a lot less active than people realize. And Simba. Ooh, the lion's moving. Absolutely gorgeous animals. Oh, wow. This is some action. The lioness is going to do most of the hunting for the pride. There's the box box. The Bontabak! Over there on the right. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah, right there. In the grass. Oh, I see him. That's Sebastian. I love how I got everyone so excited for the Bontabak. Like, everyone, the lions are right there, and everyone looked for the Bontabak, and that's awesome. It might be the Bontabak over here as well. For a second there. Seriously, that was one of the funnest uh, safaris I think I've ever been on, especially with all the Bontabak interaction. So I made sure to give Dylan a cast compliment. And I love how now on the mobile cast compliment, you can recognize them by name. So it definitely gets to them. So make sure you guys do that. Now that we got Kilimanjaro safaris done and we had an excellent cast member, well, we had an actual, like an excellent, I don't even know what they would be called. What are they called, Kristen? A safari driver. I was like, what kind of cast member are they? But we had an excellent safari driver. I think we're gonna head to Nomad Lounge. I said we were gonna do that probably sometime today. So, coming back. Perfect weather to actually sit outside too, so we're gonna see if we can sit outside. It's really, really nice. And like I said, I love being here. Look at how cozy this is out here. <laughs> yeah, this is shots co nice and cozy. Look at this. It's got such nice, cozy, comfy seats. And then take a look at these ones too for bigger parties. And you just sit back, listen to music, hear the wildlife. I like it. Of course, I had to go with the Kungaloosh. What did you get? What is it called? I forget. It's some type of like guava margarita almost. It has like oh. guava. Well, cheers. cheers. 
Clink. Congolouche. You know, I shouldn't have said cheers. I should have just said Congolouche. What was wrong with me? <laughs> well, you know, but here, Congolouche. As we're sitting here enjoying some Congo Luge, we're thinking about trying to make it to Flight of Passage before it closes and hopefully getting right on there without a wait. Look how blue it is. Like the sunset's happening. This is this is really nice. This is such a chill spot. Cozy, relaxing, everything you want to call it. How many times do you say cozy? <laughs> yeah, cozy. Sean would be proud. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we might be able to see a little bit of the uh, bioluminescence as we make our way over to the Valley of Mora. It's definitely getting dark enough out. Oh, you can definitely see it's lit up a little bit. Not so much now, but definitely by the time we get off. So I'm not gonna film anything now. I'll wait until after we get off Flight of Passage. It is gonna be so beautiful once we get off Flight of Passage, though. I mean, it's gonna be lit up nice. Well, it says 70 minutes, but we're going for it. We're going all in here. The line doesn't look like it's outside though, so that's a good sign. There is no way this is a 70 minute wait. Like we were just walking right through the queue. Look at this. If there isn't a line out this far, right? Yeah. It's been 13 minutes and I think the entrance is right there. Well, that would be the separation point because that's where the fast pass would uh, like merge. So just about 13 minute wait. I would say 20 minutes. Seriously, if I was gonna say we were gonna do Flight of Passage in under 20 minutes tonight, like I wouldn't even believe myself, but it just happened. It just happened. I am so excited. And honestly, I think the uh, pre-show was longer than the wait. <laughs> oh, oh, we're getting there. <laughs> can lift the spirits of anybody. Now, we're gonna close out the night and we're gonna go see some of the bioluminescence. Look at this. Look at this, isn't it so beautiful? Oh, I just love walking through here. Ooh, it, my shirt probably looks so awesome right now. This is just a regular Roosevelt shirt and look how amazing this looks with the black light. I love it, it looks so cool. And with that, I think we are done here today. What a fun, fantastic day today has been. Like a long day, it's dark out. I think I've been here now eight, nine hours, because it's almost 9.30. Like, isn't that crazy? Like, mind blowing. It blows my mind. The park closed at 8.30 today. I thought it closed at eight o'clock. So by the time we got off uh, Flight of Passage and then hung out and checked out all the bioluminescence, it's time that we actually just gotta get out of here. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye.